There's so much we can talk about with this building, and of course, like everything else, we're just scratching the surface. It was a building that was designed by an architect whose name we actually know. We often don't know the architect's names of antiquity, but his name was Ictinus, and of course he served under Pericles. He designed uh, the building with all of its incredible features, which we'll unpack today. But construction began in the year 447 B.C., kind of at the height of the glory of Athens and well before the Peloponnesian War. It was worked on by 200 master stonemasons, all of whom would have had their own crew. So it was a lot more, a lot more people than, say, 200 people. But these were master stonemasons who had their own, own crews, who knew how to work the marble well. And part of the reason why we know how many stonemasons, master stonemasons, there were is we can go and we can see unique chisel marks. Yes, there is somebody out there who's actually studied the chisel marks of the various uh, parts of the Parthenon to make a guess as to how many stonemasons or master stonemasons worked on it. Whatever the case, uh, the building, which is rather magnificent, was completed in 438 BC, roughly eight and a half years later, and it was dedicated by Pericles in another grand speech. It was then used as a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena for some 545 years. What ended it being used as a temple was Christianity. Because after that 545-year period, Christians took it over and used it as a church for the next 1,500 years. It was briefly used as a mosque and then a church again until 1918, the same year that World War II, World War I came to a close. But part of the reason it was used as a church for so long, based on some of the old accounts, was that it had amazing acoustics. You could easily hear voices, and of course, when a whole choir or a whole congregation sang, it tended to reverberate around the building. That is mostly based upon the old accounts, because as you probably know, by looking at photos of the Parthenon, it's not exactly all together anymore. There's a reason for that. Back in 1687, when the Turks controlled Greece and were fighting a war with the Venetians, uh, they stored their gunpowder in the Parthenon. Uh, some people say the Venetians targeted that storage place. Some people say it was some kind of stray cinder or stray cannonball. Whatever the case may be, something hit the gunpowder storage and it blew, blowing up the already 70,000-piece Parthenon into many, many more pieces. That's so why if you go uh, to Athens today and you visit the Parthenon, you'll see pieces of it all over the place. In fact, some of the drum sections alone, which are just single sections of the columns, are in a hundred or more pieces. This is why there's currently a restoration project, a project that will take decades going on to try to reconstruct the Parthenon as much as is possible going back to the original. But then again, if you want to see a full-scale replica of the Parthenon that actually duplicates uh, the exact measurements, every or almost every single sculpture, as well as all of the optical illusions of the Parthenon, all you have to do is go to Nashville, not far from where I live. Mm -hmm.